ladies and gents, welcome back. So yesterday I was reporting to you guys about the GoFundMe and uh, how it has been placed under review by GoFundMe themselves. Um, so I got a bit more news to follow up on that. Some people in the comments are saying, oh, there's a, a bit a bit cloudiness to that. So let's go over that right away. So we had Tamara yesterday do a press conference uh, speaking about a bunch of things, but uh, I'll, I'll leave a link actually to this press conference in the description down below. But uh, it, this is what she said about the GoFundMe. We also want to thank the thousands of people who have so generously donated to this protest to GoFundMe. Over the last three days, our accountants and lawyers have been working hard to deal with the legal details. This morning, our lawyers sent GoFundMe all the details that they have asked for. I am confident that GoFundMe now has all the information needed to immediately lift the suspension they put on our campaign. I am hoping to hear from GoFundMe soon so that we can get the money to the truckers and keep our protest for freedom moving forward. I will be providing regular updates. Okay, so uh, also BJ Dichter, who's the other organizer, you can't make that name up. He, uh, he's the other organizer of that same GoFundMe. He was on Louder with Crowder yesterday. If you don't know who that is, he's a conservative podcaster in the United States of America. Um, he's actually a French Canadian. Interesting to know. But uh, yeah, he, so BJ Dichter was on that show and he said that uh, if, if anything's frozen, uh, as, soon as, as soon as there was rumblings about GoFundMe freezing, that uh, people started hitting him up with Bitcoin wallets. And apparently the cash is just flowing. There is no uh, issue there as of yet. Um, but yes, uh, apparently GoFundMe has it on, on freeze. And we'll, we'll get more information about that as soon as we can. Um, did have an article here. Uh, MPs agree to call GoFundMe to testify over the trucker con convoy fundraiser. I don't know if they have actually the 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 wherewithal, the legal right to do anything about that, but they're going to have a press conference. Anyhow, so fundraising website GoFundMe has been called to testify at the House of Commons Public Safety and National Security Committee about what safeguards it has in place when it comes to releasing the nearly... $10.1 million of funds raised by the trucker convoy, raised by over 120,000 donors. No, let's not forget that. 120,000 people donated to that campaign to make up $10.1 million. So if if people think that the, <laughs> that uh, the support for this is, is, is waning, I... I'd like to suggest otherwise. MPs on the committee voted unanimously on Thursday afternoon to invite representatives to appear as soon as possible. ASAP, get over here. After NDP MP and public safety critic Alistair McGregor proposed the study during a meeting. Here's where it gets interesting. What the elections officials want to hear from the company includes how it plans to ensure that the funds are not being used to promote extremism, white supremacy, and anti-Semitism, and other forms of hate, which have expressed, they have expressed, which have been expressed, I'm not sure what the wording there is, among prominent organizers for the truck convoy currently in Ottawa. I don't see the journalist here um, writing any rebuttal or retort to that. But that, that's what they're saying here on CTV News. Now, it's an interesting thing that they bring up racism, anti-Semitism, white supremacy, when the fundraiser, two names on it, are uh, Tamara Litch. No, she's Métis. And B.J. Dichter happens to be a Jewish man. So, it's, I mean, this is, it's not, uh, it's not unordinary for this kind of rhetoric. I mean, that's just, that's just how, that's, that's par for the course these days, it seems. It seems that way. Anyhow, 
uh, we have here in Bu BuzzFeed. I couldn't help myself with this line. But BuzzFeed, GoFundMe says viral campaign for Canada's trucker protest hasn't violated its rules, even though it sure seems like it does. I mean, this is the level of journalism we have these days, ladies and gentlemen. This is just, this is the world we live in. So let's let's get on with things. Anyway, so the, the accusation here is that uh, the truckers are racist. Oh, sorry, wrong picture, wrong image entirely there. Uh, damn, wrong image once again. That, um, well, the accusation from the prime minister and other, other people out there is that the uh, protesters, sorry for the bad images, guys, is racist or hateful in some sort of way but uh, a lot of people are wondering uh what happened there if if you know justin trudeau opened up his tickle trunk which is a canadian reference if you don't get it go google it and uh pulled out his favorite costumes for some people on the first day of the protest now words getting out that i mean okay here hear me out the the protest had uh, a few bad apples on the first day in the beaten path, apparently. Uh, images were taken promptly, and then these people disappeared. But some of those images have come out with uh, a particular individual. And it's, it's funny that, you know, bad actor comes, and he's got his own personal cameraman, um, which happens to be, seems to look a lot like, and this is this is what 4chan's always good for, ladies and gentlemen. And that's... Uh, that's that's getting finding out who people are, and uh, Adam Scotti is um, none other than uh, the personal photographer for Justin Trudeau since I think 2015. So these these are the the two images that have come out of bad actors, and yet nobody in Canada supports that crap. Nobody does. The people accusing the truckers or the truckers. Nobody supports this crap. Uh, this looks like a staged event just to get people to uh, side with against the truckers. So, um, and it falls under the the old the old adage: "Everyone I don't like is Hitler." A child's online guide to political discussion. So, that being said. This is this is actually how it is on the ground, and here's uh, here's one protester voicing his opinion. This is CBC. They're refusing to interview me because I'm Muslim. They're trying to push the narrative that this is a white supremacist rally, and only white racists are here. I'm Muslim. I'm proud to be Muslim. I'm a practicing Muslim. This is CBC. Come on out. Come on out. This is CBC. CBC refuses to interview me. Refusal. Don't touch me. Don't touch my soul. This is CBC. They refuse to interview me. They're trying to paint this as a white supremacist rally. Get, get the camera. Get the camera. They don't touch me. They don't touch me. I'm not allowed to be here. I'm not allowed to be here. Don't touch my soul. Yeah, yeah, sad, sad state of affairs. Journalism uh, around the world, it seems, is just is is suffering, is suffering these days. There's there gone are gone are the days of of good, good journalism. But well, I mean mainstream journalism. You'll find good journalism on the internet. You look around, you will find good people bringing you the news. I'm just a guy in my garage bringing you my my take on this whole thing. Personally, if there was any racism or anything involved, if I saw anything that remotely looked like this protest was backed by some sort of racist element, I would have nothing to do with it. I'm not seeing that. I'll, I'll I would have to be proven without a shadow of a doubt. And let's let's just say they're gathering steam. They're not losing support. Anyway, guys, keep on trucking.